He is the founding member of one of the best bands of the 1980s, singer-songwriter Mr. John Eastdale of the band Dramarama. John, how are we doing, my friend? How are you, sir? Uh, I like to think of us as the uh, best of the 80s, the 90s, and now. I totally, totally agree. We'll have to scratch that and redo that. <laughs> Now, I know you guys are based in Los Angeles, uh, but the band Dramarama was actually formed in New Jersey. How did that all come about? Well, we, we all grew up in New Jersey and went to high school together and uh, just started the band. Put a uh, uh, 45 out, and then we put out a 12-inch, and then we got a deal with a French label called Nero's Records, who uh, offered to put out our full-length album, which was like a combination of, of the, the single and the, and the 12-inch, and then we, we added five six new songs which included that song anything anything which rodney started playing on his show on k-rock in pasadena at the time k-rock was just an independent radio station popular but and it has a good signal but but not um not the giant that it's become since in 1981 the band released its first single uh you drive me how was that first tune put together for you guys how did you guys come up with the concept for that the song itself yes uh I, you know what i don't know I don't know where songs come from. It's really, it's really hard to, to even suggest. Sometimes, I, I, I'll, I, let me take that back. Uh, the concept that that was a song that the, the, the guys in the band. Uh, that, that's probably the only song that the other, anybody else ever wrote this, the music for that I that I ever wrote that, that other people. That was that was the band that wrote that song, and then I came in and I wrote words to it, and that was how we uh, came up with that song, "You Drive Me." Which, if you ever listened to it, it's a slightly different than what we became. Where it's a little more of power pop than. Uh, than, than hard rock. In uh, 1984, the band released their first EP, Comedy, uh, which garnered uh, both critical and somewhat cult praise um, in an unexpected location of France. How did that all come about? We just sent it to everybody we could find. You know, we, 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 uh, it was in a um, magazine called The Trouser Press, which was popular at the time, and a DJ there uh, picked it up through that, and, and, and he started playing on his radio sh show in France. And then we got signed to a label called New Rose, which was uh, in France and had bands like The Replacements and uh, Johnny Thunders on it. That was when our next album, that's, that's how our album came out. Of course, in 1985, uh, Zen Verde uh, was originally released in France. And then K-Rock DJ Rodney on the Rocks, one of my good friends, actually brought you guys nationwide here in the States. Do you remember how that all came about with uh, Rodney and K-Rock? I do. We were living in New Jersey. We were uh, hanging around. Um, the monkeys were were, were 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 getting back together, and Rodney came out to. Uh, we, we found out Rodney was playing us on the radio. Rodney started playing our record uh, based on having picked up the album uh, in Poobahs, which is a record store in, in, in Pasadena. He, he just bought it because he liked the cover, and he started playing it. That was the beginning of our of our you know airplay on on the radio. Um, and then Rodney came to New York because the monkeys were were coming out. Uh, for their for, for the reunion, it was their 20 year reunion, I guess, in 1986. So Rodney came out to New York. We met Rodney. We hung out with Rodney. Then Rodney told us to come out to California. We came out to California, and uh, we started uh, we, we we started out just as a vacation, but turned out becoming um, residents of California. And uh, one of the very first albums was the uh, the cinema album that I heard uh, my cousin introduced me to it, and I always loved the, the the ending track Emerald City. It was so different from everything else on the album, uh, and I know you wrote the tune. H how did you come up with the inspiration for Emerald City? Uh, it was just you know being in a happy place. Uh, I guess it's a it's a content and and warm kind of a feeling, and and that's that was the inspiration for for the idea of the person who's singing that song. And the way I guess, kind of the way it sounds too, and, the, and it is—it's a little, it's a little more sparse. There's no drums or anything. It's just a pretty little, pretty little ditty. And and you wrote anything, anything, right, John? I wrote pretty much every song. Okay, and I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that, my friend. I know, I'm not, I, I, what, what can I say? I, 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 I drum was 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 created, I guess, for, for lack of a better uh, term, uh, as a vehicle for my songwriting. Uh, another great album that I love is uh, Box Office Bomb in 1987. Uh, one of my favorite tracks on that, uh, Still Warm. I play it on my 80s show all the time, and I get a ton of phone calls on it. Uh, still Warm. It's Still Warm. How, how, how was? What's the background on that tune? Well, a lot of the songs on that album that have to do with me moving to California and just kind of being uh, overwhelmed by the whole situation. When we when we came out here, we weren't expecting. You know, we 
we did not know what it was like to be in a band to have a song on the radio and and we didn't have a, a record company so to speak we were just doing it ourselves so uh we, like i said we were a little overwhelmed to come out to hollywood and come out to california and uh i think i'm still recovering from that shock <laughs> culture shock <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure it was and I heard there's an interesting story behind the great track "Private World." It was uh, I? I want to say it was something with with uh, Rodney on the Rock from K Rock. It was kind of like you guys were giving back to him for you know doing so much great work with you. Or uh, how did "Private World" come about? That's absolutely true. In fact, we, I don't even think we were. I don't even think we were in. Uh, had moved to California yet, but um, Rodney, uh, we were honored to be asked to be on Rodney. Rodney used to put out compilation albums featuring a lot of various artists. And we were honored to be a part of that. And so we did uh, a version of the New York Dolls song, Private World, which we always love the New York Dolls. And we always try to cover, you know, our favorite artists. But uh, throughout the years, we've always thrown, tried to throw a song from one or another. And we've put on everybody from Patti Smith and David Bowie to Lou Reed and uh, the Rolling Stones and Ian Hunter from Mata Hoople. Yeah, we've always, we, we, we've like, you know, tipped the hat to our to our influences, so to speak. And that was a big one, the New York Dolls. The last 80s album from 89 uh, stuck in Wonder... Do How in the heck do you even say that? Wonder what? <laughs> Wonderama Land. Wonderama Land uh, was home to the great song Last Cigarette, which I play on the show a lot. Um, how, how did you discover the song Last Cigarette? Uh, that was when I was up in San, San Francisco uh, and a homeless guy asked me, <clears throat> for uh, uh, it's pretty much the, 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 the opening lines of the song. Uh, a guy asked me for a bus pass, and I, uh, I gave him a dollar. And he said, "Here, you want my bus pass?" He already had a bus pass, but he just wanted to go buy some uh, some wine. And um, I was kind of that whole album again was was kind of uh, still me kind of lost in California a little bit, a little bit dazed and confused by the whole idea of becoming a, a professional musician because I really was just used to do it for a hobby. And I know, John, you guys have worked with so many great musicians over the uh, the last few years. Uh, what what are you guys working on today as far as new music? We actually are working on new music. Um, we're recording up at a, a studio called The Village in, uh, I guess it's in West L.A. And uh, it's a, a very classic recording studio. And everyone from Bob Dylan to Barbara Streisand to Lady Gaga and... Uh, <laughs> Who knows who? It's been in business for like 40, 50 years, and um, it's just an amazing studio, and we're lucky to be working there and uh, putting the finishing touches on what will be our next album, hopefully before the end of the year, but you never know. John, that sounds awesome. Can't wait to hear some new material from Drama Rama. Lead singer John Easdale from Drama Rama, thanks so much. JJ, like I said, it's the 80s, 90s, and now, and uh, everybody get on down and come on down, and we're going to have a real good time together. Cool, man. Thanks, John.